Paris-Roubaix is no ordinary monument. It was always the harshest of races. Brutal stones to smash the wheels and the resolve of all but the hardiest of riders. With any smoother respites in the surface, often turned treacherous by mud, leaving nowhere to hide and no chance to rest. Riders have condemned the race as a circus, a bad dream. Many, like Franco Ballerini, swore never to return, but then did, in his case, winning the race twice. To survive, you must attack the race fiercely and accept that the race will always fight back. But for those strong enough to win it, the Paris-Roubaix has played host to intense battles and enduring rivalries. It was in 1895 that two of Roubaix's textile tycoons, Théodore Vienne and Maurice Pérez, hit upon the idea of a race from Paris, ending at their newly built velodrome in Roubaix. The first edition, with a prize equal to seven months' typical wages, was raced in 1896. Only two world wars and a pandemic have paused it since. Its nickname, the Hell of the North, seems self-explanatory, but the suffering of the riders isn't the origin of the name. It was actually a description of the conditions left behind after World War I, with burnt trees, burst drains, and animal corpses having transformed the area into something which could only be described as hell on earth. The cobbles, once a simple fact of life, are now cherished by fans and even stolen as souvenirs. Each year, the friends of Paris-Roubaix spend over 10,000 euros repairing damaged sectors to keep them rideable. Nevertheless, these aren't the cobbles of Flanders used by daily car traffic. Welter winner Chris Horner once compared the Roubaix cobbles to a scattering of rocks in a ploughed field. And in places, this isn't far from the truth. In fact, such is the toughness of riding them that the organisers rate the various sectors from one, easy, through to five, extremely hard. These five-star sectors are the stuff of legend. The Carrefour de l'Arbre, mont saint pével and the most infamous of all, the Tour d'Arenberg all to be traversed at breakneck speed. They say if you go fast enough that you'll float over the cobbles, or maybe it'll just be over sooner. Some suggest a light grip on the bars, a bit of extra tape, two pair of gloves, or no gloves. Every rider will have their own rituals to minimize the suffering from the constant assault on the body. With such a parkour, crashes are an inevitable part of the race, and never more so than during a wet year. Connoisseurs of suffering, both fans and riders, have always insisted that a true edition of the race is a wet one. And it's fair to say that only the greatest of bike handlers can stay upright in such conditions. Only perhaps to eventually collapse within the iconic velodrome itself, battered, blooded and caked in mud. So why do it? Why has this horrific feat of endurance not been consigned to the history books? To quote two-time winner Sean Kelly, Paris-Roubaix is a horrible race to ride, but the most beautiful one to win. <laughs>